Perfect. Hi everyone and um, welcome to this month's uh, guest speaker who is Natalie Jane and she's a body image coach. Um, for anyone that's listening from Natalie's side, um, I run a Live Better, Feel Better, Work Better membership group, which is an online group and I provide masterclasses, meditations, guest speakers, coaching, and it's all about building up resilience um, so you can walk forward through life with um, a purpose and then create a life and a career that you want. Um, there's also lots of other different stuff in there. You get 10% discount from anything else if when you're a member that you get from me. And there's a workbook that you get to stay calm, healthy and positive. And that's just a few things that you're all getting in the membership each month. So this is one of the videos that would be going up in there. That's the guest speaker with Natalie. So I will start off and introduce you. So if Natalie, if you want to just introduce yourself and explain to everyone and my members what you do. Yes, of course. And I think sometimes um, people do hear body image coach and they do think, what is that? And then you say body confidence and that can be misleading. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so basically I kind of work with women around building, basically building our worth and our self-love outside of what we look like. So outside of that number on the scale and the size of our pants and, and everything else that kind of goes with it and feeling like we have to look a certain way to fit in so really working on finding just what lights us up and what and getting to a point where we can feel good about ourselves and feel confident and just feel happier and healthier without the need to as I say try and conform and look a certain way and crash diet and do all these things that we do feeling like that will give us those things. I want to, I help ladies to find that without having to do that basically. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so it kind of it works on side with what you do because obviously that the live better, feel better is very much my motto as well because I think if we are mentally healthy, if we are physically healthy, we are going to be happier. We are going to be more content yes. with life, aren't we really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And a big part of that is, self-care which is what we want to talk about today and so I think that I think self-care in itself can be very much underestimated can it <laughs> it can yes we go at the bottom of the I list think, don't we <laughs> absolutely absolutely and I think I mean I know for me um because the reason I kind of started doing what I do is because I struggled for a lot of years around <clears throat> excuse me I've got a lot of tickles today around putting a lot of my value in what I weighed and how I kind of looked and it took me a long time to shift that. And I used to think that I did a lot of self-care. So I thought I was really, really good at it because I would go to the gym a lot and I would make sure I didn't overeat. And all these things I kind of misleaded myself into thinking it was self-care. Because I think sometimes we do do things which actually, when we slow down, they're damaging. They're not actually. Yeah, it's more of a controlling thing, isn't it, than self-care? Absolutely, yeah. And I think for me, the big awakening around self-care when someone actually educated me on what it actually is, when I learned a bit more about it, was just, oh, so there's more than physical self-care. Oh, yeah, okay, tell me more, tell me more. Because <laughs> for me, I never paid any attention to, I knew about it, and I kind of worked in areas where I would help people with their anxieties and their mental health, but I never put the two and two together. I never put me and how I felt about myself that my self-care had anything to do with that. I thought it was all just about the head. And obviously our brains have a lot of an influence about how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. But I think we underestimate the little day-to-day -day things that we do and how they actually, the ripple effect and how they impact us basically. Yeah. And I just like, for me, mental self-care emotional self-care and then especially when someone said spiritual self-care I was like I don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> so, is that just so do I just meditate is that am I done then yeah um and I just didn't know anything about it at all and it's for me now when I kind of like work with people self-care has its own little it's his own little step in like my five step thing it's got its own little baby um because I'll talk about self-love but then, I mean, obviously self-care is, it's under the umbrella of self-love, isn't it? But for me, self-care needs its own step. So I only do five steps and one 
is just all about self-care because I think a lot of the time I mean I don't know if your ladies will ever do it but a lot of the time I used to think that if I if I want change really really badly um then it will just come it will just come if I think about it hard enough and if I just do this one thing then it'll just magically appear and that that if I change one thing then it solves all of my other problems and I think does it I think and that's where we end up getting hung up on our weight and our size a lot because we think oh well if I don't fit in and you know I'm not doing well at work and I'm not really finding myself a partner and I'm not getting married this is all because of my weight we kind of pin it on the one thing so we think if I fix that all the rest of the things will just come to me and they don't it's what I realize yeah um it's it's actually the other way isn't it it's the other way it's like if you fix the underlying problem all those things the weight the you know the job the partnership and everything because you start feeling good about yourself isn't it absolutely and you know at the times where I thought I was doing the self-care because I was just doing the physical side and feeling really rubbish about myself I actually was just damaging all the other sides of my self-care so the more I focused on one and the more I kind of didn't actually pay attention to my self-care I, just, I damaged the other areas more and more so my mental health got worse my emotional health got worse um and it was just you know this one thing was working but everything else was just crumbling really yeah um you know and that's why doing being quite consistent with our self-care because I think we're all very good at putting it in place we're not very good at keeping it away <laughs> and I think that's yeah that was all yeah, I think um it starts, it's self- like New Year's resolution, isn't it? You start it and in a couple of weeks, yeah. it's like it's gone. Maybe a month if we're lucky. <laughs> Absolutely. We wait for things, don't we? Um, and we think, oh, I'll do it now or I'll do this 30 day this and I'll 30 day that. Really sorry, my little girl's coming upstairs. But <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> the thing. You know what, talk. Hello. Don't look at that. Can you go back down. Apologies, ladies and Hilly's group, days of home working. Well, as Natalie was saying, we um, when we're not working on all the areas, we throw out the whole system of our self-care. And a great way to describe it is that um, if you have a car and the car um, has a flat tire, it's not going to work. It needs every area of the car to be function. It needs petrol, it needs a spark plug. And if one's out, it's out. And it's the same as what you were saying. It might sort of, some of them might be able to override a bit, but it starts damaging the car and it starts damaging our body and our mind. It's the bigger picture isn't it when it comes to self-care and that's where I think yeah. as you were going on to it's the consistency isn't it of bringing that yeah. in that helps that absolutely because I think for me when I you know when we're consistent with our self-care we're looking after ourselves I think we are more able to manage the stuff that life throws at us aren't we if we are because when we're when we're doing our self-care we feel good don't we we feel physically good if we're kind of covering all areas that is you know we feel physically good don't we we feel we feel a lot calmer less stressed and that's not to say that we don't get stressed and we don't get anxious and we don't feel rubbish sometimes and tired but we're more able to handle that yeah we're more able to stay rational um I know for me when I'm kind of run down and I'm not looking after myself one of the big things I get is I just I kind of lose the ability to to concentrate and I lose the ability to focus on things. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, whether it's at work or particular goals that you have, we are more able to focus on our goals and actually achieve them if we do the self-care and if we understand how they relate to each other. Yeah. And how they can impact onto each other. It kind of, I suppose it just keeps us motivated, doesn't it? It keeps us it keeps us going because if I'm not I mean if I'm not sleeping then everyone's in trouble you know yeah. I, it's then it's a simple thing I think sometimes with self-care we think it's the big gestures don't we we think it's it's a spa weekend it's yeah. you know the it's a bar and chocolate the gin and tonic and you know yeah, exactly and all those things are brilliant aren't they and they've all got their place but 
you know, it's the simple stuff. It's having a shower in the morning. You know, yeah. how many times do we rush around? I mean, I know for me, especially, especially now. Parents, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so easy, isn't it, to just get up because we're not leaving the house. To just get up, chuck some comfy clothes on, chuck our hair up if it's long enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then just kind of like go around the day. And I found myself doing it the other week. And I started to think, oh, I feel really rubbish about myself. You know, I'm feeling really grotty and I'm really tired. And I was like, go, you know, similar things like go and have a bloody shower. It's no wonder if you're grotty. You know, you're kind of slumping around. And I had a shower. And do you know what? I, I was like a new woman. Yeah, because the simple things that we do, we think they have no impact. We think that, you know, getting up and having that little routine, that little structure of stuff that we do, that just keeps us going, we underestimate it, don't we? And I think when we get stressed and when we hit hard times and when we're struggling, we let a lot of the little stuff go. We let a lot of the, the little things that make us feel good, we start cutting them out. Um, and I think for me, we don't notice that at first, do we? We don't, we don't realise, oh, I've started going to bed a bit later because I'm not putting the kids to bed at the same time, so I'm actually getting less sleep. We don't think about that when we wake up and we're tired because yeah. we don't kind of pin all these things together. And I think over time then, so a week or two later when we're feeling really bad, we can't bring it back and think, what is it I'll stop doing? Yes. Because... I think by that time we've stopped doing a lot of things you know we've got lazy with our cooking do you know what I mean because we're tired so we can't be bothered to do cooking from scratch so we start just grabbing stuff and we start it all starts to unravel because of one little self-care thing that we let slip I think yeah um maybe that's just me maybe it's just me that gets <laughs> lazy um but I think it just the self-care for me is just it's just the foundation of of everything that we do um and just if we're trying to you know we're trying to live better we're trying to feel better you know we I mean self-care is all what tuning into what self-care is it I need isn't it and that's one of my big yeah. things is you know what do I need so if I I want to do self-care because I'm anxious I need to do something that's going to help with anxiety you know or yeah. if my self-care is around getting fitter um, or losing weight because it's okay to want to lose weight okay to want to put weight on you know then we need to focus on things that do that and I think sometimes we pick self-care that people suggest to us or we think we should do rather than self-care that actually a ticks what we actually need or b that we actually enjoy yeah because if you don't enjoy it it's like um I used to get a lot of clients going to me well I need to be doing yoga and I go do you like yoga and they go no and I go why are you doing it then because that's what everyone does. Yoga's good for you. Or I'm meant to meditate. Okay. You yeah. know? Um, or I'm meant to be able to run 5K. Okay. Do you like running? No. No, nor do I. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. I know I could work for it, but it doesn't work. Getting on a bike works for me. Yeah. I know what I like. I know what I can want to do, what I want to do, you know. And it's finding yes. those things, isn't it? Then it becomes yeah. consistent, doesn't it? Because you enjoy it. Exactly. And it is. And it's as you said, then it's stopping using the words like I should be doing this yeah. or I must go and do that. Because we just, I mean, as soon as anyone says should to me, I'm like, well, no, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it horrible. And I know for me, like I, you know, I've got really into yoga recently, but go back two or three years, I thought it was horrendous. I didn't really see the point of it. And I'm like, just what am I doing I'm just stretching around you know what I mean yeah but it's because at the time I was that at the time I was just focused on the physical self-care so for me to go and do yoga was just yeah. pointless because it wasn't it wasn't burning the calories that I wanted to burn because I was so focused on that side of it that it didn't yeah. serve what my purpose was at that moment in time yeah and I think when we kind of then sit down and go do you know what actually my head's completely crazy so I need to be able to actually focus on my attention and be able to be kinder to myself yeah and and then I started to enjoy it but I also had to find someone who didn't irritate me doing it because I think you've got to find people who you gel with don't you it's like in coaching you've got to talk someone who do you know what you just get along with and they just talk your language because otherwise it just doesn't work does it (laughs) 
<laughs> no, and it's really funny. I remember years ago I was listening to some talks and it was before podcast was around, but they'd, a friend had got a download of the Hay House um, convention and I was living in Bermuda, so I was getting used to the American accent, but I got given these like downloads and I was listening to them and some of the stuff I wasn't interested in, but the voices was just like going right through me. So as I'm trying to listen, I was like, can't listen to this voice, can't listen to this accent, can't listen. And I went yes. through it. And I think it was, some of it was, they weren't talking what I was interested in, you know, nothing was gelling and you know, the voice wasn't. And so even if it was, it was like, thing. and then all of a sudden I went through and I found one and it was an English accent. And, and he was talking about real fundamental, he was talking about happiness and everything. And I ended up training with the guy, but, it was funny how I was flicking through these things because it was like, nope, nope, can't, can't, can't. And like this download had masses because this conference goes on for like three days and the, my friend had bought all the talks. So, you know, I'm flicking through da, 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 and it was like, bing, that one. Ah, that's what I, <laughs> you know, and I did and I got his books and I got, but because I connected, you know, it was yes. that connection. And if you don't have that with any of your self care, we can't get consistency, can we? We just can't have no. this, you know, um, yeah, it's, it just doesn't flow, does it? And when life doesn't flow, it's not easy, it's not so easy. No, like it gets awkward then, doesn't it? And I know for me, like one of the big, <clears throat> if I don't kind of like keep myself care up, I mean, for all of us, there's different consequences, isn't there? So if we kind of like let it slide or we think to ourselves, you know, because when we're thinking, oh, that's not working for me, that doesn't suit me, that's irritating. We have this habit of then just going, I don't want to do any of it then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And instead of thinking, I'll just maybe find something else that suits. So whether that's wanting to eat healthier, get fitter, be calmer, what we do is instead of thinking, okay, so what else could I try? And yeah. trying that, what we do is we go, well, well that doesn't work that's rubbish yeah. and we get really inconsistent don't we and we pick things up and we put them down um and for me when I'm doing that I think it encourages me to think that I'm it's all about me it's because I'm failing and because I can't do things and therefore that's why I'm struggling that's why I can't you know I can't be less stressed because that's just me and I've tried it before and it doesn't work for me and it's just who I am and we kind of pin these labels on ourselves and yeah. I think every time we try and do it and we don't manage to stay consistent instead of questioning why we haven't been able to stay consistent we blame ourselves for the fact that we can't be consistent yeah and we I kind of you. use that yeah and we use that as a little bit of a beating stick and I think if we're already struggling with you know maybe not feeling good about ourselves, whether that's physically or mentally, or we're just we're feeling down, that is really harmful, isn't it? It's it really is. harmful to yeah. kind of do that. Because what we're doing then is we're taking something that's supposed to be bringing the good stuff out, and we're actually turning that into some a reason to dislike ourselves more. Yep. Um, and to think badly about ourselves. And I think we end up then in that, like, you know, you were talked about in your group, with that thought, emotion, behaviour cycle, and how we go around in these cycles. Yeah um all the time and I think we just we don't get where we want to go if we if we set self-care goals it's because we want something at the end of it and obviously when I'm working with people I'm all about you know let's not work on that goal being a number let's yeah. just work on that being you know feeling calmer feeling like you can put that dress on and just feel fab yeah regardless of what way you are and I think we are more likely to get to our goals if we're doing that self-care whereas if we're not consistent with it we probably won't get there no um so for me when we're not consistent with our self-care we don't then get to the end goal of what what we need it for um and we just feel rubbish you know as I said before if I'm not looking after myself um on any level you just feel gotty yeah. um and I think that then has its own knock-on effect in every area of life doesn't it so if I'm tired I might, you know, when I, when I used to go into work, when I, when I used to work and go into places and work, I would, you know, I'd go in and I wouldn't really be present and I'd make mistakes and I might be a bit crabby with colleagues. Um, you know, I might be at home and just tired and say I might stop eating well and I can't be bothered to exercise because I'm so tired and, yeah. you know, you're not connecting with people in conversations. Yeah. Because you're just like, I'm so tired. 
<laughs> you're just like, you're not, you're not, you can't listen. And I think all these little things have a knock on effect, don't they? So self care is just, I mean, it's integral, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of I mean, thing. my masterclass this month was it was the title was like how to stay healthy through the winter month. But one of the things that I brought up and my clients that have worked with me and been in the membership for a while, they know I work with the balance will module for me as one of my modules I have. And it's all in different sections. It's like sections of the pie of the will. And, you know, there is all the different self care. And we use the thing of check back in at your balance. Well, what's missing? What's not working? And it was we were just going back over that because we need to remind ourselves all the time. You know, it's it's bringing it back. Um, And definitely what you were saying about the key of when we have an emotional thing of going back and beating ourselves up. See, I never achieve that. I never finish that. I can never get there on that. I'm no good at losing weight or I'm no good at whatever. Um, And they are emotional things that we've had. And generally, sometimes the stuff that we've had from earlier on in our life um, and when I do my coaching as well, um, I do a lot of clearance, like um, we call it like um, sort of shift block clearance. And we go down in meditations and we go down and clear these patterns so we can let go of them and move forward. Because like you said, if you don't, you know, as much as we need to keep the self-care so we don't beat that up, if we let go of those negative thoughts, you know, we can move forward and it, life just becomes a lot easier, isn't it, of getting that. Yeah. It and just, it says, like, with our, like, early years, we'll probably define how important we think self-care is. You know, if we're taught yeah. that it's really important and we're taught to have balance about it, then great, we go into our adult life with a really healthy attitude to self-care. But if we're not, then, you know, I was talking in, in the group today about, like, self-compassion. I was talking about, you know, we can't, we can't do what we're not taught you know you can't learn something if you're not taught it so yeah. if you're if you're not taught how to do it and how to kind of look at yourself care and all the aspects of it you're still going to think some of the main things I find that um I know for me with things and the ladies I'll talk to and I imagine you ladies as well that makes consistency really hard is just is life and kind of all the responsibilities that we have you know there's so much going on yeah. And I would hear myself all the time saying, well, I don't have time and, you know, I need to do this instead and I can't just do that. And, you know, I remember someone once saying to me at the time when I'd say it all, and they'd be like, we all have the same number of hours in the day. And when you said it, the, my first default thought was, we'll go off, that's really irritating. Yeah. <laughs> I'm busy than you. I'm yeah. normally busy than you. I've got small yeah. children. And I came out with all this like, big long list of excuses to why my life is so much harder. But you know, on reflection, you know, when I calmed the monkey mind down, I was like, completely right. We do. We all have the same hours in the day. And a lot of the time it's about how am I spending my time really? Yeah. You know, because my partner will say to me now, well, I haven't got time to do that. You're all, you're lucky doing this yoga every morning. That's nice. And I'm working from home. I I can't do that. I've got to be at work. And I'm like, well, yeah, but tonight when you get home and you sat for an hour and a half every night watching Netflix, you could do yoga for half an hour of that and it'll be like I'm like it's what you choose to do with your time yeah. isn't it and I think and like and you were saying like, earlier isn't it if you ate properly through the day and done this and this you'll have the energy at the evening instead of it being mentally or physically yeah. draining so it's getting all those in place isn't it and Absolutely. actually setting that as a thing isn't it if you know you're doing yoga tonight and you're thinking about it as you go through your day you're going to walk in and do it aren't you so it becomes a consistent habit you know that's Um, it I think training training as a habit is quite a big thing and I know for me I have to plan you know we've got a we've got a there's some self-care that we'll just do automatically don't we know we just we generally get up and just brush our teeth you know sometimes you might forget what we do because that's just that's become the habit especially staying at home now (laughs) exactly I'm like did I brush my teeth (laughs) <laughs> I'll do them again just in case it's okay I'm going <laughs> out with a mask <laughs> yeah, yeah they, can't, they can't smell me from here um you know but we do don't we and I think um a lot of the time so I'm sitting there going I clean my teeth <laughs> yeah, yeah, after I've distracted us now I've done that thing that I do where I take it off um but yeah it's so true because I mean 
if I'm planning it and I think that, okay, I've got to find that balance. And I think everyone's got to find that balance between planning it, but not being really rigid with it. Because for me, one of my struggles with consistency used to be that either I dance between these two, proper dance between them, I'd either not plan it. So, oh yeah, I'm going to do such thing this week. Or I'm going to get into this week. I'm going to, I'm going to start reading again this week. Well, when? Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to read? When am I going to do it? Am I doing it before bed? Am I doing it at lunch? Yeah. When am I planning on doing it? And then if it just wouldn't happen because I haven't actually factored it into my day. Yeah. So I just get scared. I'll be going to bed and I think, oh, yeah, can I can never read again today. Oh, that like, tomorrow I'm going to read. And then I <laughs> no, just go on like this for ages. Yeah. But then on the other flip side of it, I think I struggle with consistency as well because I was too strict. So then what I would do is I would overplan. So I would go, I do my reading at 8 a.m. till 8.30. And then if I didn't do it at 8 a.m. to 8.30, I was like, well, it can't happen now. It's not, you know what I mean? That was my time. That that was the time (laughs) I did it. And now I've lost that time. So then I just wouldn't do it. And I think, and I, and I work with people who do that. And I think sometimes we can get quite obsessive. Yeah. So it is about finding that, do you know what? I'm going to do it. And ideally, I'm going to do it in the morning just because yeah. it's easier for me to find the time then. Yeah. But if I do, it's okay. I'll just factor it in at some point, but I'll make sure I do my reading at some point. So I think it's, for yeah. me, consistency is also about like getting that balance of planning it, but not being too rigid with yourself. Yeah. Um, and I think another... And the thing with that for me as well is be flexible in what self-care you're going to do. So, you know, if you think to yourself, so say if it's exercise and we're thinking, right, okay, I want to I want to get outside for a walk and I want to get some fresh air and I want to just increase my fitness and all these different things that come with that. But then do you know what? It's raining or you get back from work and I don't, I don't, I, I love walking, but I won't walk in rain. I'm a bit soft like that. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll get back and do you know what? I am actually just really tired. Yeah, it's about going. Back, what else can I do instead? You yeah, know, what else can I do instead? Could I do a quick twenty minutes in the front room, or you know, if I'm feeling really tired, shall I do a yoga instead? So I'll still get the calming benefits and that stress relief. Yeah, I might not get the fitness side of it to a certain degree, but I'll still get some of the aspects of what I wanted without having to drain myself. Because I yeah. think sometimes we can, you know, oh, I do hit four times a week, and that's what I do, and we do it even if we're really tired. Yeah, and I think we've got to listen to our bodies don't we and go do you know what today I'm exhausted and we need to call ourselves on if that's just a massive excuse because we all know if we're exhausted or not really there's a difference between exhausted and can't be arsed isn't there yeah (laughs) there's a a line there there's a huge line (laughs) exactly sometimes it blurs but you know on the flip side if we are exhausted you know then do something else so don't not do anything but do something else that's going to make you feel better. Yeah. And whether that's actually, it's not going to be about fitness, I'm just going to go and I'm going to go to bed early or I'm going to go and read my book or I'm going to do a yoga. Do something else that's for you, but that doesn't make that situation worse. Because yeah. if you go and do a hit, if you're, if you're physically exhausted, you go and do a hit, you're just going to feel even worse, aren't you? It's not yeah. going to... And probably damage yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And damage yourself, yeah. Yeah, definitely pull something because you can't burpee yeah. properly or whatever it is you're trying to do. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think, and a last one on the consistency, for me, a really, really big one is the complacency. So when we get to the point where we've we've got what we wanted, so, and especially when I'm working with women and we're focusing on, you know, feeling good in our bodies, when we do our self-care and we get to a point and whatever you're trying to do, and we think, I'm feeling that now, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling all the benefits of all these positive changes I've made. Sometimes we think we don't need to do them anymore. Yeah, can stop now. I've done it. I've done it. You know, and we do it with body confidence all the time. And I, well, I know I did, and I think quite a lot of people do. And you know, or just reducing our stress, or getting less angry, or whatever it is that we're trying to do, getting more work-life balance. We do things, we achieve it, and then we think, brilliant. Can step you can take my foot off, can't you? You like. I'm done, you know. I'm woo. back. I can relax. <laughs> exactly. And then about two or three weeks later, we're going, I feel crap. Why am I starting doing all this crap again at work? Why have I done that? You know, why am I Why am I starting to think that I look crap again? I've just compared myself to her. And we start doing all these things again. And we don't, and we act like we don't know why. Yeah. Because we don't realise 
I think we forget, don't we? And that's part of the thing about as we're going on any journey to do anything about celebrating the little successes that you're doing it because if we celebrate them and we go do you know what I've achieved this and I've been doing that and that's serving me and that's achieving something like self-care you know I've started doing yoga so for me I'm like I've started doing yoga do you know what actually I can calm my mind a lot quicker I'm paying more attention to my body this is brilliant and acknowledge that that is what that brought yeah you're more likely to know that you have to keep it in place I think don't you yeah but yeah complacency for me and I think I think we do it in all areas, don't we? We just think, we think we fix our problem and we think that Tick. we're all, we're sorted now. Yeah. yeah, I am now a really happy, positive person. So I no longer need to do any of the things that made me happy and positive. It'll just stay that way. You know yeah. what I mean? I'll just, I'll fit up even if I don't work on it. And it'd be lovely if that was the case because, you know. But yeah, life changes all the time, doesn't it? So yeah. you have to go with it and have... You know, my big thing is, um, and this is what a part of the live better, feel better, work better is, is you, it's like a toolbox. You collect all these tools, don't you? You put them in and you pull them out. Some some you use more often than others, but it's all there and you create what's right for you. Um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you say your self-care has got to, got to change with you, hasn't it? Because the self-care that I did when I started working on how I felt about myself is so different to the self-care I do now. Yeah um because it also has a different purpose because we're always going to have bumps in the road we're always going to have things that are triggering triggering us if I can say that word I found the account today <laughs> and we're going to have we're going to have stresses aren't we we're going to have that regardless yeah of how positive we are how happy we are how content we are we're going to have struggles aren't we and if we have like put that toolbox to the back of the garage and then put loads of stuff in front of it yeah. We're not, it's not, it's not going to be that easy to just fix it. Whereas if it's like when you did like the car analogy before, I suppose it's like getting your MOT, isn't it? You know, if, yeah. we, if you keep on top of things and you check in with yourself and go, oh, actually, that, that oil level is a bit low. You know, yeah. my brake fluid's a bit low. I need to top that up. Yeah. Then we stay on top of it, don't we? Yeah. Um, whereas if we kind of let it all go, we kind of feel like we're starting from scratch and that's exhausting. And yes. a lot of time and then you then, go back into the self-doubt again see I can't do it I didn't do it last time I can't achieve yeah. it you know I That's always hit this road and it's like actually no you don't always hit this road you just need to carry on it's you've you've got over yeah. it once it's not there anymore just yeah um, and I think that's why because I like because I won't keep your ladies too long I, I can talk forever me and <laughs> um, but is you know the main things for me about being consistent with the self-care is about making it that habit so if you if you know that I mean I could juggle the kids around and do certain things that meant I could do certain aspects of self-care but that would only be a short-term measure and I think a lot of time we've got to put boundaries haven't we yeah you know whether that's time boundaries boundaries are how much we'll help other people you know boundaries around work and the overtime we do um whatever it is we've got to actually put that boundary in because if we just kind of attempt to fit it in and attempt to do things and it's always a bit of a stress trying to get it and it's always a bit of a challenge and we're having to work about it making it part of the day it's going to be really hard to be consistent whereas if we put that boundary in and people people know now do you know what she's she does this then and that and that's her time and this is important to her people start to respect that yeah um and I know I know when I started making lots of changes and started putting boundaries up, people don't necessarily like it <laughs> because if we spend a lot of our time helping other people, yeah, we can feel very selfish when we take that away, can't we? And that's why people say, oh, self-care's, you know, got this like selfish yeah. connotation that goes with it because it's like, oh, well, if I'm caring about me, then I obviously if I'm putting time for me and I want to go for a walk by myself, it means I don't care about my kids. If I want to be away from my kids and have that time, I must not care. I'm a bad mother, yeah. which is rubbish because... If I don't have that time, I'm more likely to be a rubbish mother because yeah. you know, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> yeah, I might kill them. I, you know, I'm going to be distracted. Yeah. I'm going to be a bit grumpier. I'm going to be more stressful. And, you know, we've got to put them boundaries in. And, you know, yeah, we've got to negotiate. We can't just go around going, well, I need to do all these things now, so you all need to accommodate it. But it's finding that compromise with people to go, you know, me and my partner now, it's very much like, right, well, I need to go and do this, and that's what I do. And to a certain degree, these are the nights I do it because that's what's easier with kids. Yeah. Uh, and then everyone kind of knows where they are. They know when it's their bedtime routine and when it isn't. <laughs> um, you know, and then he's got to have his time, you know, and it's just about 
putting them boundaries in and if you find yourself working overtime all the time at work and you want to take loads on all the time which I think we all want to do because we're generally people pleasers aren't we yeah you know we want people to like us we want to feel helpful we want to appear not selfish that we sacrifice ourselves, isn't it and I think the other thing as you said very early on Hayley is about we've got to be our, our own priority haven't we yeah you know no one unfortunately no one is gonna you know people will obviously make sure we're all right but we are our only consistency do you know what I mean our relationships of any type will and can change at any moment so if we you know if we need permission off people to do self-care if we put everyone else before ourselves then we leave ourselves just drained and you know and wide open really for really when really things go wrong, isn't it? To be, yeah. you know, to crumble a lot quicker, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's what the whole resilience thing is, isn't it? It's like to be able to recover, you know, when we do so. The actual uh, definition is how to recover quickly, and it's not always quickly because I don't believe it is, you know, but it's to be able to yeah. recover, it's to be able to come back, and how do we do this? And you only get that when you're looking after yourself because you know how to then come back. You know, we yeah. take the hits of whatever's happened. But the thing, but if we put everything on to someone else, like you said, I need their permission to give me self-care or them to say, yes, it's okay for you to go off. You're not yeah. building you up, are you? No, exactly. I think the more you, you do self-care as well is the more you become aware of yourself do you know what I mean become aware of what you need become aware of what makes you feel good yeah um and the more you're doing that and the more aware you are of yourself the more resilient you can be because if you if you're quite in tune with yourself and you know you know yourself a lot you know how you think and you know how your emotions go and you know your little patterns and cycles which for me self-care plays a massive part in yeah then you are more likely to be able to manage the bumps and you know when you have them knockdowns which we all get be able to go right okay I know what to do yeah. to put myself back in that position you know this isn't I'm not down for good I need to do this I need to do that you know and I need to get my contract with it and that's okay and I think the big thing about being consistent as well is if you find that you know, you've had a week where you haven't done something but you notice it just start doing it again I think sometimes we kind of think and I know because I'll talk about exercise because obviously that's what a lot of the women will talk about is people think like, I've ever heard people and they'll say oh well, you know I used to go to the gym all the time and I used to do this you know just use an example but do you know what I went on holiday and then I got back and I was really busy and do you know what it's been about three months and not do you know what I made all the cancer membership now because <laughs> because like we feel like because we've stopped doing it yeah, we can. And we kind of fall out of that habit that we may as well just completely sack it off. <laughs> Instead <laughs> of just going, oh, I've not been doing it, let's get back yeah. to that. And that's what awareness is, isn't it? It's not always awareness about what's, you know, good for me. It's awareness of, oh, I'm dropping or I've stopped something. Okay, what do I need yeah. to do, isn't it? It's really... Exactly. Um, exactly. And, that's, and that's self-care itself, isn't it? Being able yeah. to then... Put yourself back for it to number one and go, do you know what? Yeah, do you know what? I was busy. I was helping my mum out because she wasn't well. And that's okay. Do you know what I mean? That's what I needed to go and do. Therefore, I've not had the time. I actually haven't had the time to go and do that. But now that time's available again. Yeah. I need to make sure I give it, put it back to where it should be and not put something else in its place. So not put someone else's again. Because I think yeah. that's what we end up doing. We think that this is now free time. And, you know, sometimes people around us see free time and they allocate things on to me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, say so are you are you not doing anything? Yeah. Could you just and I'm, and I'm always like, no, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm like, you don't, you, don't, you don't look busy. <laughs> like, I know I am. No, I can't. I can't come out. Because we do, we then we allow people, and I think that's when we allow the boundaries to slowly like putting boundaries in place is one thing, but keeping them there. Yeah. We struggle with it. Only takes one thing to happen that makes us flexible with our boundary for a small period of time and then we struggle to make that a solid boundary again yeah because you know if we go off and help our mum and we do something then all of a sudden we get tied into doing something for them afterwards all the time yeah um instead of, kind of putting that back up and going well do you know, actually you don't need me now you can do that yourself now yeah and then stepping back and putting ourselves back we struggle with that so I'd say for the fact 
I think I've got five things, five things wrote down. I keep, I keep semi notes because otherwise I'd get distracted. Um, the big things around being consistent for me are the setting boundaries. So really ask, you know, really asking ourselves what boundaries do I need to set? You know, looking at like the wheels, so looking at like all the wheel of, of life and all the different areas of life. In what areas of my life do I need to set boundaries? So is work stepping on my self-care because I keep working late? You know, is, um, you know, is my mental, you know, the mental side of it, in my relationships, is there any separate bonds in my relationships? Are we, is the conversations going on around, you know, one of the big conversations we have in my group is around like diet chat. Are the conversations going on about the dinner table that's damaging yeah. my self-care? You know, do I need to put a boundary on there? Do I need, there's all these different things that we need to put boundaries around. And I think people, if people in the group have kids as well, I think there's, we struggle to put boundaries in with our kids because we think that makes us bad. Yeah. Um, whereas to me, I've taught myself to kind of go, well, do you know what? No, because what I'm doing is I'm teaching them to have boundaries. Yeah. You know, I was saying to, you know, I said to Haley earlier, um, you know, my daughter started saying to me, uh, oh, look, mommy, I just need two minutes. Okay. I just need two minutes. I just need to buy by myself. Yeah. And it makes me laugh because I know where she's got it from. And I, <laughs> then I turn around. So me and the littlest one, I go, come on, leave Robin alone for a little period of time. Let's leave her alone. Everybody needs time for themselves. And we walk away and we leave her alone for five minutes because that's her boundary and that's what she wants and that's what she needs in that moment in time. Yeah. So I think it's really, really positive to teach as a parent, yeah. your parents, yeah. to teach, you know, prioritize your self care. Your self care is all these different areas. And you know what? If you need that time, you need to tell people. You need to be assertive and you need to make it clear and do it. And they do that. And sometimes I don't like it. Well, I respect <laughs> it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think it's so important. I think it's so important. So make sure you put boundaries with your kids as well because they'll learn from it. They'll learn from it. Be good for them. Yeah. Um, know your excuses. Know the difference between your real reasons and your excuses. Um, get accountability as well. You know, whether that's accountability of writing it down. So having a little, yeah. having it there on your to-do list for the day. So it's there, it's written there. You know, for me, if I write it down, it'll happen. If I don't write it down, it never happened. It didn't even exist. Yeah. Um, or get an account, you know, get a buddy, get someone who you do that with, you know, whether that's, you know, you go online and you're part of something yeah. and that encourages you in a morning now. I'm part of like a miracle morning. You might have heard of it. Um, that someone invited me to. And it's like an hour on Zoom and they do meditation, they do gratitude, you do kind of like silent reading to yourself and it goes on for an hour. Now it's great for me because they might be things that I wouldn't do if I wasn't accountable. And obviously I can not turn up if I choose not to. Yeah. But because it's there and I know the ladies are there, there's some accountability there. I feel I'm like, I'm going to show up because I know it'll be good for me. Yeah. And it, you know, it's there, it's at this time it gives it a level of accountability do you know what I mean yeah and I think that helps us sometimes doesn't it um remember why you're doing stuff so remember why you want that self-care so if you think to yourself you know I can't bother to go out for a walk and get that fresh air you know it's reminding yourself why did I want to go for the walk what was I going to get out of that walk and reminding yourself how you're going to feel after you've had that walk yeah and then kind of that's going to motivate and to carry on doing it and that can be whatever it is you know motivate remembering why you're going to have that conversation about your boundaries with your boss yeah what am I going to get about that if I stop doing all the time how's that going to affect my life that, that's why I'm having the conversation because otherwise we back away from things because we generally don't like confrontation we generally don't like um to just feel awkward do we don't like to feel awkward or uncomfortable a lot of times we forget the big end goal don't we we forget the end picture we can only see in that moment in time so we forget why we want to do something we forget the feeling and the end goal we just get the fact that in that moment we can't be asked <laughs> and that's the only thing we can focus on so yeah. I think sometimes it helps to do that and then the last one is just being realistic isn't it be yeah. realistic about your self-care because I'll always say to women I'm working with I'm like no we're not going to change all that no we're not going to do all that at once that would be ridiculous because we're not going to work on every single area or every single self-care goal you have and just chuck it all in because A, it's overwhelming, it's too much, it's exhausting. Yeah. For me, it's about, right, what is the most important change? So what self-care are you going to feel the best for doing? What do you need the most right now? And then create that into a habit. And then when that's been created to a habit, 
let's look at another one. What else? What else do you need? And then kind of like slowly build them in and doing it that way. Because I mean, it's like it's like you said with like the New Year's. Yeah. How many things do people want to put in at New Year? Yeah. You know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. And by February, we're not doing any of them because <laughs> we're powered out. Do you know what I mean? We're exhausted. We feel rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> because it's about lifestyle changes, isn't it? Self-care is about our lifestyle. It's about habit. It's not about immediate gratification is it no it's it's a long game self-care for me um so yeah so I hope that's kind of like that's just brilliant a recap I think because as you said we all need a recap we can be great at self-care and we can be rubbish at it and we're all as bad as each other with consistency yep. aren't we and we um, all a lot I of just, us know all this but it's just good to hear it again so exactly it's been great exactly. talking to you yeah good good and say most of the time we listen to talks and we go I know that I know that yeah I know that why am I not doing it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no they're right they're right and yeah, yeah we do most things in life we know at some point we've been taught it we just forget or we pretend we don't know because that's more convenient <laughs> yeah and <laughs> sometimes we need to hear things a few times to it to sing in like you Absolutely. said it's the right time you know when you done the yoga the first time it wasn't the right time it's now so okay, yeah yeah so, so a yeah, quick recap definitely. you've said we've got to number one keep our boundaries number two yeah. know our excuses number three have accountability number four remember our why and number five realist be realistic yes absolutely That's brilliant absolutely it's been really good it's been really interesting to oh, thank you thank you for having, having me in i say i can i can talk all day me i'm terrible so <laughs> <laughs> i was like stay, try and stay concise try and stay concise <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah all right then so i will stop videoing and it's lovely to see you all and i hope you get loads out of this and um in my group i have Natalie's link to your website. You have a Facebook page as well, don't you? Um, how yeah, else? yeah, I'll give you the really, um, link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got a Facebook group, and you run group coaching, don't you? Is that correct? And yeah, so I do at the minute. I've got like an online, like a bit. It's like a self-paced self-study course, but I'm there as well. So if when you put your answers in, I get them. So it is a bit interactive, but online interactive. Um, and yeah, and the one-to-one -one coaching, and then I've got I'll um, I'll give Haley the link to the Facebook group for the the free Facebook group that I do that I'm kind of in every day. Um, where I post a lot of words of wisdom, and motivation, and tips. <laughs> Fantastic, that's great. So um, so thank you for joining us, and I will speak to you soon. Yeah, it does.